Okay, so to begin, just kind of give you guys um, a little idea of um, pretty much how it can be useful. Uh, and you've probably already seen, oops, let me get rid of that. How's that? Does that sound better? The microphone system, I just want to say thank you to Jamie, who's from the front row. Here, Jamie. <laughs> uh, it's <really> embarrassing. <laughs> um, he, he provided us the, uh, the system here. We've got uh, speakers on the side. Uh, this microphone, which is also hooked up directly to my, um, my computer <coughs> for recording. Um, I usually use the recording that's on the keyboard, and i got to start shouting when I start walking to the side of the room. So this way I can you know, relax my voice and present it to you. And assuming everyone in the back, you guys can hear me very clear. So, creating and publishing audio, video, podcast. I actually have created a, uh, a podcast of this entire session already. Uh, you can go online to uh, iTunes and type in the following. Let's, uh, let's actually get to it. Oops. So here's iTunes, okay, and uh, today I happen to be featured here on the K-12, to that's pretty cool, so I'm excited. Um, and it, nothing's more exciting than publishing your student podcasts and then seeing where they rank in the top 10, top 100, all over the world. Um, one of my classes was really exciting in Japan, they were ranked number 24. You might think, okay, well, there are 24 podcasts that are published. You know, there are well over thousands of podcasts that are available on iTunes. So it's every podcast that is available on iTunes. So they were number 24 in Japan for their student-created podcast. They had some others that, that had hit higher than mine in some countries. So they were really excited. One of my math groups actually hit, I think, 15 or 12 in, uh, in Germany. And that week, they had to be several uh, you know, rankings higher than mine. So that was pretty cool. They were pretty excited. So once you uh, get iTunes, if you go into the search, you can search Pop-Up Podcast, and that will give you all of my podcasts. All right, but what we're going to do, just to show you guys what um, where my podcast that I created for um, to show you guys a demonstration, it'll, it actually includes many screen captures of the actual websites that I use to upload the videos. These are the websites that I use to upload the free websites. It's all free. Um, uh, so all the free websites that you can use to host your videos and how the, um, a step-by-step -step, uh, instructional video on how to upload your videos onto iTunes. So when you go in, type in Francis Lieberman, and if you click on this one right here, creating audio video podcasts, free. They're all free. Okay. So you can just kind of go in there and actually download it. If I don't get a chance to kind of go through, I'm not going to go through too much too many of the technical aspects of how to go through it step by step. Um, you can do it through the video, or you can go to the following website issue.com forward slash pop up podcasts. What I've created here is, um, well, I was going to provide you all with a handout. The handout was about 16 pages or eight pages front and back, and I didn't really want to waste all that paper. So I'm going to be and since we've got a little lunch occurring tomorrow, I thought let's start it today. All right. um, so go on there, I will show you what it's going to look like. So here it is. Here's issue. Um, you're going to go into um, into issue, and it's going to be the first one here. We're going to open this up. And it's kind of like a magazine. And here's a, a place where you can uh, 
If you're ever interested in uploading any PDF files for your classes, you can always use this you know, like a side note. Podcasting, but here's a website where you can uh, upload your PDF. It comes out kind of like a magazine cover, and you can look at it page by page. Um, and so within there, it's step by step detail on the website that you're using to put up an audio, a video podcast, and how to post onto iTunes because it is a little tricky posting onto iTunes. Uh, but I kind of go through it all. Um, I will give you guys my email address if you ever have any questions. Please send me an email. Um, you know, if you're kind of stuck on any of the steps, just let me know. Um, you can also, not you don't have to watch it there, so if you do want to print it off on recycle tape or <laughs> So, uh, that's the tool. So. Okay, so, a few things, obviously, you need a lot of um, <laughs> or a desktop. So you want to have some kind of computer. You can do a couple of podcasts. I've actually set up video cameras sometimes. I'll set up a video camera in front of a whiteboard or a blackboard and actually do a lesson that way just to kind of change things up. Uh, give variety. Sometimes we'll want to see a person, you know, I guess explaining it. Try not to do those like too many. Um, like being in front of the camera. Uh, so, camcorder. If you do choose to um, uh, create a video in that way, uh, one of the assignments I had were, was uh, students kind of presenting in front of the smart board, and what we did was we did a screen capture and a camcorder at the same time. And it was cool, so I had them actually set up the editing. And so they were able to edit from screen capture to camcorder back and forth and kind of get a really good cool effect. Microphone, if the microphone's not built into the laptop or desktop, um, you can always get one of those portable mics uh, by Logitech. I got one. Uh, thank, thank you to the lift department for that. Um, they gave me a uh, microphone. And so what was great with the microphone is if you're going to have a student do a lesson, you can have the students in class kind of doing their CPR, hook up the microphone to the computer. And so just have a student stand in front of the, uh, the, uh, the smart board, answer a problem. And they can just kind of talk to themselves into the mic, and the mic will pick up just their voice. As long as the class is shouting and screaming across the room. Right? So uh, it's great where the kid, you know, the student who's in front of the board doesn't have to protect their voice to be picked up for the uh, for the audio. Smart board, optional. Um, you can do a screen recording at home if you're going to use something like PowerPoint. Or if you're going to do a, a tutorial, let's say, you know, going through steps um, online, if you're going to show somebody how to kind of maneuver throughout a website, um, as long as you have the smart board recorder. So my advice to you, you know, obviously you're not going to go buy a smart board from home, but if you ever want to record a lesson, just download the smart board tool. And the smart board tool, one of the, um, uh, the features is um, a screen recorder. So you set up the screen recorder, hit record, and just kind of present your PowerPoint or go through whatever demo you have. And the only thing is, you're not going to have the ability to, um, I guess, to write on it. But in PowerPoint, if you're going to present using PowerPoint, um, PowerPoint does have the pen tool. The only thing is, you have to be able to maneuver with your uh, with your mouse, and you can actually add text. You can write things in. Yeah. The smart board recorder is available at the smart board. Uh, it's available on the smart board website. Uh, you, all the schools, I think, are equipped with the smart board, uh, or have been given the smart board CD. Um, and so you can download the, uh, the software from the CD. And I think every school has got the code, right? right? It's, on, it's, on it's on most of the Pardon? It's on all the, but I'm saying, for, because I do know that it's accessible for students, they can take it home. They can uh, download it from home. And I think they're given yeah, they the need, uh, all you need is the serial number. Of the smart board. I think every smart board, every smart board is a thousand. Is that what, okay? Kind of thousand down. Thousand. I'm just kind of learning about that. Just a couple of days ago, I found you have two thousand two smart boards. Two thousand. Two thousand. Okay. But you cool. need the, you need the serial number from the back. From the back of the smart board. Okay. Because it only downloads a thirty day trial. Oh, does it? Okay. And then you put that in. Put that in. Yeah. Well, there you go. Actually, 
we have to email that code yeah. to the to the smart board people, and then they'll mail you back the code. Okay. Enter. There you go. Something I learned. So, and, and it's a great tool, like if you're gonna have you know, your students to be able to do um, their own, one thing I, I always, um, I've been yeah, testing it out this year was for students who are really, really shy about presenting in front of the class. And so what I get them to do is I tell them, well, you're gonna present in front of the class, but this way, and we watch your DVD. So we burn it onto the DVD, you present at home, or you present with me after school if you don't have a computer at home, We'll record it for you, but you have to be, you know, you have to let us watch it in class. Right? So kids are usually a little, a little bit more, uh, you know, relieved that they can present on their own, and then everyone just kind of watch. It. Right? But again, it's a screen capture, so they're not in front of the presentation. So blogger account. Um, this is what I use to upload. Um, my videos. This is one of the resources. It's free. Uh, it's through Google. Um, videos cannot be more than 100 megabytes in size. So if you're um, if you're looking to um, if your video is longer, it shouldn't be. I've posted videos close to an hour using the screen capture, and it's not hit the 100 megs. Um, if you are going to do a camcorder recording, yeah, you might hit the uh, the 100 megs a lot sooner than you think. Uh, feed burner, uh, you do not need this if you have no intention of um, posting onto iTunes. This is a site where you send them the address that you created with your blogger account, you send it into feed burner, and feed burner will send it to iTunes, or will give you uh, an XML um, link that you can now go into iTunes to set up your iTunes account. Uh, just to go back to the blogger account, if you are going to post videos um, that your students have created, if you're not comfortable with posting to the World Wide Web, um, you can actually put a password protection on the site, on the account. You can set it up where um, only those students, so you get your, your, your class's email addresses, you have them just kind of come in, type in their email addresses, set up a password, and only they will be allowed to log in and watch the video. So this way, someone can do a Google search of your videos, they won't be able to find it if you put a, a privacy on that. So if, you're, if you don't want everyone to watch it, with Google you can actually put a, a, a privacy on, on your videos. I had that with one of the classes uh, that wanted to do podcasting, but they didn't feel comfortable um, posting the world, so it was just they get 25 students in that class, set up their email account um, on the blogger, and only they were able to log in. So whenever they typed in the, the login, or sorry, their new web address, to access those videos, right away the user name was being asked and password. So you can't get around. You cannot get around. So no one can just access your videos if you put that privacy on. Uh, YouTube account, I used YouTube to kind of advertise myself. Well, in reality, it was none of my students were watching my videos when I first started publishing. They thought, ah, I already heard you once, I don't want to hear you again. <coughs> so I thought, hey, I've never posted a video on YouTube. Everyone started posting everything on YouTube. I thought, why not put something educational? And I posted it on there, and just like <laughs> our speaker said today, you'd be surprised at how many people are actually, you know, will actually watch them. And last thing, uh, an iTunes account. Uh, you might, if you're, you are interested in posting on iTunes, um, it'd be great. Uh, because this way it's something that is easier to download. Um, from these, the sidewall from FeeBurner, you can actually download videos, but from Blogger, you can't. Uh, from YouTube, you can. Right? If you get the right website, keepvid.com, you just kind of do a search on how to extract uh, videos from YouTube, and you can actually download the actual video if you want. But if students have the iPod, um, some kind of uh, video MP3 player, uh, pretty cool to be able to go on iTunes and be able to say, hey, I've got something on iTunes. So software, uh, Smartboard Tools has the screen capture 
recorder, as I'm going to show you guys again, if you're using the laptop or desktop PowerPoint, get students to put together a PowerPoint right now. I'm doing, as, I, as I told you guys, I'm doing a screen capture. So everything that I've been showing you is being recorded right now. So a student can be presenting at home, as I'm presenting to you guys, record it, bring me a DVD, or just you know, send you the link to, um, to watch their video. Uh, Audacity, um, I think all the school board computers have it. Uh, you can actually record just audio podcasts. So if you're wanting to create a little you know, ebook, an audio book for a textbook or for, for a part of a textbook and you want to kind of have your students be able to um, so just listen to the textbook instead of to read it, go here. Uh, that's how actually how I started. I used uh, just the audio. And what I would do was um, I would post my PowerPoints on Econs. Students would download the Econs. I would present um, using just the audio. And, stu and I would tell the students when to change the slide. And so students were able to. I, I was away um, at a conference uh, when I first started. And that's where I got the idea. And so I um, did the recording. I up, uh, uploaded the, um, the PowerPoint. And I told them when they were going to change the slide. I told them when to pause. The, uh, the recording and actually work on a sample problem. And uh, students sat in the computer lab, watched the PowerPoint, and were listening to the lesson as they always teaching. Movie Maker, iMovie. Um, iMovie, if you're using that. Um, movie Maker, if you're using PC. Um, this is if you want to edit your videos. If you're going to do something really fancy, if you want to add maybe some text or some credits. I, I do that just for the credits. Sometimes, um, if I'm doing um, a lesson, I'll be recording my lesson, so I'll be teaching a uh, period or 40 minutes, half an hour, however long. And then every now and then, I'll send a sample problem. So there'll be all that dead space. I don't want to upload a video with all that dead space. So I'll go in and I'll cut that out. And then when I upload the video on YouTube, on iTunes, on Blogger, all that is out. So now a student can kind of pause it, work on a problem, then just unpause it, and it's kind of continuing from where we left off instead of having that you know, two, three, five minutes in that space. PA comes on and announces a name. I don't want their name. <laughs> you know, I, uh, I'll, I'll sometimes record after school. PA will go off every five minutes and i got to remember where I'm editing. Right? So, but, um, but by having your students um, doing some of the, the activities, you can kind of get a, a clean, quick little podcast. I'm going to show you guys that. So educational be benefits, I'm not going to kind of talk too much about, um, about these. I'm just going to show you some of the, the, uh, the bulleted things. One of the things that I really try to promote my podcasts to my students is it's a tool that allows you to study when no one thinks you're studying. Right? You can be walking to school, on the bus, and you're listening to a lesson, and you're still looking cool because you've got the earbuds in your ear. No one knows what you're listening. And you could be learning and, and kind of reviewing for you know your test period to right. uh, you're on a road trip, you want to you know log a whole bunch of textbooks. So with my class, they don't have to worry about that because they can just download my lessons. The other thing is think about how students, you know, they'll really understand the lesson. So it's September, they're getting it, right? This is the beginning of the year, October, eh, sorta. Of. Come January, when finals are midterms, and all of a sudden they're looking back at an old topic that they understood, right? and they're looking at their books, they're looking at their notes, it doesn't make any sense. So all of a sudden, I can replay the lesson and capture that moment again that I had back in September, that I had back in October. So now a student is able to react at what point they actually had that eureka moment. Right, where they finally get it because you said that. Right? So they're able to capture that moment. Again, that's, that's priceless when a kid can, can watch the, the lesson and go, I didn't get it in class, I watched it a second time because I didn't want to ask you a question, I didn't want to stop you, I didn't want to embarrass myself. They can watch it again and then all of a sudden it's like, I get it now. Kid misses class, instead of having to read the textbook, 
photocopy someone else's notes, recopy someone else's notes, they can literally listen to that lesson again and have been part of that class right, without having been there. Right. Uh, one thing that I do want ultimately with the library that I'm creating is where we get to spend more time problem solving and less time with the lecture. Right. Give that to Homer. Instead of reading these pages, listen to this, watch this video. Okay, we're going to go through the theory aspect. Now in class, we're going to go through every single sample problem. Like how many times have we, we struggled to not be able to get through X number of sample problems because we spent the first half trying to explain something. You can actually spend a little less time doing that and actually going through the parts that are going to help them on a task that they go through some of the more difficult sample problems instead of giving some really, really simple ones that are like, okay, I get it. Now go on and do the homework. So ultimately, that's where uh, where I see my class going. So just kind of talking about the ability to be able to listen to something, uh, miss classes. You know, let's face it, students get involved. Um, you know, they they're going on uh, you know sports events, they're going skiing. Um, I have students who leave for vacation, um, you know, in the beginning of December and miss the last couple of weeks before Christmas holidays. Right? So all of a sudden they're coming back in end of January and missing a, you know, a whole bunch of January. Right? So now they can actually go and still recapture that moment that they missed. Right? And by having these videos accessible online, they can access them as long as they've got internet wherever they're going. Uh, so supplementing class notes, um, you know, just the idea of actually putting text and actually putting a visual behind it, right? Because if it was as easy as just reading a textbook or reading the notes, why don't we just give our students the book and go, there's the book, see you in June for the exam. We teach them stuff, right? We, we explain to them things. And what we want to do is, why not have, let them take that home? Why not allow them to, maybe, because I know some of my the parents that I've spoken to, they've actually sat and watched the videos with their students. Because some parents are trying to help their child. And so when they're doing, they're reading the textbook and going, even I don't get this. And maybe if you explain it and they get to hear it and see it, maybe it's something that they will pick up that they will be able to help their son or daughter. Okay. Uh, audio resources for blind and distant education students. Uh, portability, the idea of being able to take it to go. Right? Kids with their friends, they think he's listening to music, he's listening to the lesson and he's studying and he's still keeping his, you know, his reputation cool with his friends, right? Uh, beneficial to auditory learning, uh, multitasking. I do allow my students, um, if they can prove to me that they do have my lessons, I do let them use it while they're doing homework in class, while they're doing C work. Um, so it's a great tool. Um, one thing I have uh, is uh, I have tutorial sessions after school. When students come in for extra help, I usually, when, when they do that, I usually send them off to watch one of the videos before. And after they do that, then we go through our tutorial. Right? Nine out of 10 times, they, they walk out and go, I get it now. So these are little tools uh, that will really help your students, the portability. It's the idea of being able to have the classroom environment again when they're not in the classroom. Maybe in a moment where they're actually feeling you know, clear-headed. Right? Sometimes they come into class, they're not paying attention, you know, nothing personal to you, but it's, you know, they're going through a lot of, of, of troubled times. So right now, you know, they're kind of just dozing off and just looking at you, maybe they've got their head down. Maybe they don't even want to come to class. But by having that resource, they can now learn at the time that they're ready to learn. Now, so we've got the following problem. I'm just going to show you guys just how easy it is to, um, to set up your student to pretty much go through a problem. Sorry for those who aren't interested in that. I've got a math problem uh, that I can present. Uh, another tool, actually, just before I go into that, um, at, at the elementary level, you can always test out their reading. Right? So sample, put up a, uh, a paragraph, have a student just read it out in front of the smart board, record it, right? have them critique um, their abilities to read. Right, and then see how they progress 
times a year, give them the same paragraph several months later and listen to the report and compare them right, and see how they've improved their reading ability. So anyway, let's uh, get the screen recording up. So this is what the icon will look like. Uh, Very similar uh, between PC and Mac. Right? The same three buttons, record, pause, and the stop button. If you click on the arrow, right, you have the ability to change the recording area. Right? So um, if you don't want to use the, the entire screen, you can do that. I usually just keep it at the default. And the default setting is the entire screen. You can create a little window if you wish, right, and just record that part. Yeah. Keep it at the default, which is the entire desktop. If you click up at the top here in menu, you click on options, the following will come up. This is where you get to change your video quality. You have the following features. Yeah, I've got it there at standard. I usually record at standard. Uh, you're going to do a lot of writing on the smart board. Sometimes you can get a little choppy. But the thing is, with uh, at standard rate, it still gives the video quality a decent video quality, um, and it shrinks the file. If you uh, go into the five frames per second, um, it will make the file bigger. And of course, as we said, 100 megs is um, max um, that Blogger will allow you. But if, on, if you're on YouTube, I believe it's a gig that you're allowed. So if you're planning to post on YouTube, why not? I usually keep it at standard. So I'll keep it there. Hit OK. So you send a student up to the board. Send a student up. Have them solve the problem. So so and so comes up to the board, and you tell them when you are ready, hit the record, and solve the problem, and explain how you're solving the problem. So you've got a, you know they've got the microphone on, and they just kind of stand in front of the board. They don't want to talk and look at anyone else, and they'll be like, okay. So actually, let me just hit the record. So we're gonna hit the record. It starts recording. You see the uh, the timer going. I don't know if it's laggy because it's recording. Anyway, I'll do that. Uh, and solve the problem. So they'll be like, okay, so I'm going to write out my equation a little cleaner. Right? And what I want to do is isolate for x. And so they go through uh, pretty much the steps. Right? And it's for nothing. <laughs> or you can watch it later and see how it all worked out in the end later on when I post this online. And I think it didn't work. I think it didn't work. Anyways, I'm going to show you guys at the end, hopefully, my video. That will work. I didn't test out. I tested out the double dipping. It worked earlier today. For some reason, I'm having some technical difficulties. Let's see if we can bring this up again. Just so I can show you guys. No, it's not letting me do it. Anyway, so you get the idea. What happened was, well, what would have happened was another window would pop up to allow you to save the file. It comes up as a date. You save the file, you know, Johnny's rearranging, you know, solving for X, and hit enter and you save it in your files. You upload it later or you just keep it in your own personal file, burn it onto a DVD um, so you can have, you know, a copy of it. Watch it later if you want to, you know, just let Johnny kind of do it without feeling intimidated with a teacher kind of over him like this, going, are you going to get it? Let them make the mistakes and see if they correct their own mistakes. And this is it's a great um, assessment tool because it allows them maybe to, you know, they'll, they'll go up, they'll make a mistake, and then they'll realize they made the mistake. And right? they'll go in and fix it. You can allow students to create their own lessons, and if, and if you're willing to publish them, you get permission from the parents to the sign the, um, um, the forms. It's slipping my mind. Immediate release form, that's it. Uh, you get them to sign it at the beginning of the year, um, and, and, and put some modifications. I put some modifications. I tell them that where I'm actually going to be posting, that I will be posting on YouTube, I will be posting on iTunes. Um, and that you know their videos will be Google searchable, right? So this way they know exactly what that media release is. And I, and I do speak to the parents. Um, I teach a, um, a 
tech, at a tech class, and we record a lot of, uh, of our lessons. And I've spoken to the parents um, at the beginning of the year, and I, I've gone to, to and I've told several of them uh, face to face about what I do and what they'll be doing, and how you'll be able to see what they've created in class, and it'll be posted online for the world to enjoy. And I'm just going to share. Bless you. I'm going to share a few of the uh, the podcasts. Here's my channel. Um, it, I started it about. I think it was about a year and a half ago. Um, a year and a half ago, and I've already hit through over three hundred thousand views, which is pretty cool. I didn't think educational videos had a place on the internet like this. On YouTube, of all places, you know, you can see so and so kind of do a belly flop into the pool and get a million views, right? And then you've got educational ones, and it's pretty cool that there are there are tons of people out there who've been willing to uh, take the time and put on these um, these educational videos. I'm going to show you a couple, just a few, a little clip. Here's one of my students. They just did a math one. Sometimes either in class, if we've got the time, after school, um, I've started a little club where with the club, you know, they come in and they actually do these recordings, but they're getting credit in class as well. So, um, and they're pretty eager to do it. They're pretty excited, and they're, they're excited when they get to post it and see how many views they get. Yeah. set up the account so once you set up the account up at the top here is upload so we'll click on upload Hopefully the internet won't lag and then from there just click on upload video and I'll then kind of open up a window uh, your window of where your files are on the computer okay. and then you just yeah that's it YouTube usually allows a lot of um, different types of uh, video formats um, to post Right. So you just find the video here, and then hit uh, hit select, and it'll upload. Uh, the only thing is, with YouTube, you're limited to ten under ten minutes or nine minutes fifty nine, um, unless you get a partnership like I just found. So now I'll have to post over a long time. You know, a gig, under a gig. So which is great because now my forty five minute lectures now or lessons. Are, don't have to be broken down into a six minute part one and a seven minute part two and a three minute part three because I try to keep the ideas together. I don't want an idea stopping and then they're having to search through a YouTube for where's part two. Okay, so this way, uh, which I'm fortunate now that I can actually just put the whole lesson at once. Yeah. Okay, sorry, sure. And then how do you check uh, who's, who's seen your quote? Like well, when you go on, when you go on to the video, and let me just put up one of my other students. They did a recording with, uh, um, with the camera. And then just when you click on the video itself, it'll actually tell you how many views. So this video here that these students did, which was cool, was um, they wanted to do in front of the camera. And they did an experiment. Um, and they even dressed up for the part a little bit. And so they were pretty excited about, um, about the video. So they put together the video and they even put a little blooper reel at the end of uh, some moments. They thought, oh, why not? Let's just have some fun with it. And they had a great time recording it. 
um, they had a great time kind of going back and monitoring. And, and kids want to see, you know, it's like, oh, wow, I got five use today. You know, oh, you know, I'm up to 12. You know, all mine's beating yours, right? So I had a kid the other day, he's like, sir, my video is up to 600 and something views. Great. It was awesome. You know, that was, you know, so I was really, really, so they're really excited about that. Uh, here's the blogger. Here's the blogger that I told you guys about. Um, this is where I can post the videos, and from here, YouTube, sorry, iTunes, in conjunction with FeedBurner, right, will allow me to take these videos um, from this site and take them over to uh, to iTunes. Right. Um, so again, you create an account, you go in and click on New Post, and the same idea like um, like the YouTube when uploading your video on there. The only thing is with this one, you're limited to 100 megs. Sometimes even if you border close to 100, like 90 megs, you might get the errors. You know, try it again. Sometimes actually at, at school it doesn't work. So if you you know know that you may have to upload those videos at home if uh, the school board is not letting us on water for some reason. Um, here's um, FeedBurner. Okay, and in FeedBurner, all the channels that you've ever created, these are all my channels I've created. So I've got uh, channels that I've created that are my lessons, channels I've created that are my students' lessons. These are the STS lessons. So these are students teaching students, um, whatever the topic happens to be. And within there, there are a whole bunch of their, um, their own created podcasts. And I tell them, you know what, when you're putting one together, right, keep in mind that my next year's week, create one even better in your week on top. <laughs> so, you know, keep in mind that when you are doing it, put some pride into the video because you don't want someone to say, I can make it better. And then what's the point to having four or five, six of the same video on top of it? Yeah. Uh, I was just wondering, after you post the video on YouTube, mm -hmm. can you delete it? Can you post yes. It? Oh, yes. Uh, what about deleting individual comments? Yes, you may. You can actually disable the comments. Okay. So if you're worried about maybe someone, I don't know, maybe bullying, I guess, yeah, uh, a, a student uh, and their pre presentation, you can always just disable anyone's comments. So you can disable comments, you can disable... Just a reminder that these sessions will be ending in approximately 10 minutes. And then if everyone could quickly proceed back to the main boardroom for our uh, closing end note. Thank you. Um, you can disable ratings. Right? And YouTube's actually changed their rating system. It's no longer on the five-star uh, rating system. It's now on a like or dislike. So you click on like and it gives thumbs up, dislike, thumbs down. And really, you can't really see it unless they're going to change their, um, the, uh, the format. So you can't see the five-star rating anymore. So I had a student who had uh, I think a three and a half star. They, were kinda, they felt down because everyone else in the class was like four star, four and a half. I didn't tell them, I go, go in and vote for one another. So it didn't really make any difference. So if people are looking for that topic, they will see that topic. But anyway, um, once you set up your you just set up the channel that you just set up, so you type in whatever it is, you know, it could be, I don't know, English dot, and the address is always going to be whatever the blog name you've given it, dot blogspot.com. Let me just show you guys. This is what the address will look like. So here I have this one. It's pop-a-podcast.blogspot.com. Um, whatever that name is, that's just for that blog. So you can create many channels. I didn't know that at the time. I didn't really want to use pop -a podcast for that one, but because it's just chemistry. So I kind of wanted to have chemistry in the name, but I didn't realize it when I was playing around with it at first. And there's no point in changing it now. Um, if you're posting on, um, on YouTube, uh, you have the ability to create a playlist. And um, I'm going to show you guys our school website. And on our school website, I've been able to post my podcast, my student-created podcasts. And by creating um, playlists, right, students have the ability now to scroll through all the videos that you've had, you have you've created for that playlist. So here I have uh, for the grade nine chemistry class. Uh, a whole bunch of these podcasts. So all they do is scroll through them 
and see which lesson they need. So they're not having to go fiddle through YouTube to do that. Right. So um, you do it on you. You do all the work for them on YouTube, and you can just kind of embed uh, the code into a website. Uh, I don't go through that in my little demo. But you can always have any. Uh, is that always for yeah. everyone? Is, or is it yeah. So any, if you want, you can actually. I I do a Google search of Papa Podcasts, <laughs> and uh, just to kind of see what people have, you know. They and I actually found teachers who have embedded my videos on their website, which is kind of cool. Right, so do a Google search, um, and, this, and this one teacher uh, said, uh, oh, if you need help in your chemistry, uh, this teacher from Toronto has got a whole bunch of Cam 1s. I'm going to post it here, but if you have problems getting to it, you know, let me know. Whatever. And so it was kind of cool to, to see that there were other teachers using it. Um, my email address is accessible to them as well, so I have students who will send me an email on any help here, or thanks for the help, I aced my test, um, because of a video, um, and that's pretty cool. Um, I've gotten teachers who actually will use my video as their lesson, <laughs> instead of teaching their lesson, so they'll have me just teach it on the, uh, on the screen. It's flattering, um, I don't mind it really, I don't really care. It's, for me, it's, it's flattery. That I let you do all the work, let them reap the benefits. No, to me, it's you know when someone can use your work and and it's helpful, right? Let's face it, my students, right? Is, even though they've got my resources, they might be better off with another chem teacher or math teacher. Right? They've heard my version. They might need someone else's version. So I buy box to students from the other classes who aren't in my class who are watching my videos. They're my bigger viewers. Right. My own students, they'll, only, they'll watch it the night before the midterm or the final. Right. They don't watch it on a regular basis. The students in the other class, they're the ones watching it on a regular basis. Right. So sometimes, you know, you can be creating a tool that might be helpful for someone who maybe needs a different perspective on a topic. Um, if you're going to post just audio, uh, a website called Podbean, P O D B E A N dot com. You can upload um, just audio files, MP3 files, um, and you can actually send those also to iTunes. It's actually really easy to do the whole iTunes thing uh, on the um, on my um, on that file I gave you guys. I told you guys the website to get the brochure, the little booklet, uh, the instructional booklet. Um, it actually goes to a little bit of detail of how to go through uh, uploading onto Podme. Uh, everything got changed because the site I used to use just got shut down. They're still using, but they're not allowing any more updates, uploads at all. So it kind of changed my you know, my presentation for the audio podcasts uh, not too long ago. So. Okay. So. Um, so, pretty much, I went through a whole bunch of different. The locations and they're all free. The only thing that you gotta pay for computer. That you're using. But if you're gonna use, you use the school computer, um, the most it might cost you, and you can always maybe bug your principal for some money for a microphone. So hook up the microphone to a computer, you get the audio, have a student stand in front of the, um, uh, you know, the smart board, put up a problem, have them answer it, record it, stop the recording, save the recording. And you've got now something to assess them with. Something to compare their abilities over the year. You've also got an ability to uh, get them to present in a different way. So students who are nervous, students who are shy to present in front of the class can now present at home in front of just you, right? with you know, the exception that we will be playing it because it's only fair that everyone hears your presentation. And it really helps. Students really get a lot out of it. And a lot of the students are they're excited because I'm going to give them a little DVD of all their work. Right? So as the year kind of goes on and everything that they've done, right, they'll get something that they can say, here, this is my portfolio of stuff I've created. Is there a question? Yeah. How do you complement this with e class, for What, what I do, because all my courses are online, so all, what I do is um, students can actually watch the 
the PowerPoint that they want. Um, with uh, YouTube, they can actually just extract the audio. So they don't know how to do it. Uh, so they extract the audio, um, download it, let's say, into their MP3 player, and then they can just kind of watch the PowerPoint if you post the PowerPoint. My, with my e-class, though, what I do is um, uh, I've been playing around with embedding now the video. You can actually embed the playlist. So now students don't need to worry about this website and that website and the other. It's all in one. And that's what we're doing with our school website. So you want to maybe talk with, um, with within your school, people who are responsible for writing your school website, and get them to incorporate the e in it. Like with the website that I helped uh, design for our school, uh, we posted the e -class, we post I posted my podcast. So I just got to tell my students, go to our school website. They can get everything. Before it was okay. Remember your e-class, and they always put www.eclass and can't find it. Right? Uh, then, oh, sir, what was that account where you found the videos? You know, so this way, if they remember one website, and that'll be the one that's on the school agenda. That's all they need. They can get everything. So, yeah. No, exactly. And they can just have all of the stuff that they need to go to. And exactly. Totally actually, that's one of the benefits of uh, a blogger is that they can actually subscribe to that feed if they want. Mm -hmm. using. So if you post anything on Blogger and you've allowed it accessible to anyone, right, you can actually get that RSS feed. Right? So anytime there's a new video that's being posted, you get notified that there's a new video that's being posted. So students can also subscribe on YouTube. So when um, you post a new video, they'll be told they'll get an email saying, you know, watch this new video that was being uploaded. So, yes. I have a question. Uh, as you were presenting, even right now, if you look at the top of your screen, there's a lot of static electricity created oh. by uh, the carpet that you're presenting on because of everyone's movement on the carpet causing static electricity, which is also evident in your audio recording today. Um, is there anything you can do to prevent it? Like, Actually, I, I put that out in there. Is it really? Yeah, there's static in the recording. So I don't how do you prevent that? that? Like, what is it caused by, and how can we prevent it? My, my guess would be to kind of shut that off. No, like in the recording, there's a static. Is there a static? Yes. Mm -hmm. So it, we did an ad hoc setup at 8 o'clock this morning. Uh, it's just the sensors. There's a window there, and that. So it's from the window off. window sensors, so it won't actually end up on your recording. Uh, well, it depends. Normally, we this is actually in a lot of schools today. Uh, you doing this exactly to for this type of scenario? In a and they, room? Oh no, yeah, the carpet's fine. It's actually okay. a higher uh, infrared signal. And the okay. Just so static. that's the interference then that we're hearing. Yep. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, it's, it's funny when he turns that way. Because yeah, the windows, the windows a very bad for infrared. Okay, thank you. Are there any other questions before I conclude? No. Thank you for coming. Uh, let me see, let's test out the the screen capture. Let's hope it works.